Egzamin maturalny z języka angielskiego. Rozumienie ze słuchu. Poziom rozszerzony. Wysłuchaj dokładnie informacji dotyczących tej części egzaminu. Rozumienie ze słuchu trwa 25 minut i składa się z trzech zadań. Zadania te sprawdzają umiejętność rozumienia wypowiedzi rodzimych użytkowników języka angielskiego. Usłyszysz nagranie, które zawiera zarówno teksty, jak i instrukcje do wykonania zadań. Każdy tekst zostanie odtworzony dwa razy. Na płycie przewidziane są przerwy na zapoznanie się z treścią zadań oraz ich rozwiązanie, sygnalizowane dźwiękiem. Przed wysłuchaniem każdego tekstu usłyszysz natomiast dźwięk. Rozwiązuj poszczególne zadania zgodnie z poleceniami w trakcie słuchania tekstów oraz w trakcie trwania przerw po ich wysłuchaniu. Zadanie czwarte. Przeczytaj uważnie polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. Good morning and welcome to all the international students at our university. My name's Rebecca Gowers and I'm from the University Health Service. I'm here to tell you about medical care at our university. Firstly, all students registered on a full-time course of six months or more are eligible for care under the National Health Service, which includes free consultation with a general practitioner and free hospital treatment. Medical insurance is therefore not required. Please note that there's a standard charge of £6 for any prescribed item of medication and that charges are made for dental care. Secondly, remember that you should register with a doctor as soon as you can, if possible, before the end of this week. Also, you're strongly recommended to register with a local dental practice. You're not obliged to register with the University Health Service. You may choose another practice if you wish. However, every student must attend a short interview with one of the staff of the University Health Service. A full timetable informing you about the exact time of your interview was sent to each of you in the pre-arrival pack. Remember that medical interviews are a condition of admission to the university. Also bear in mind that the pre-arrival pack contains a medical record card, which you should have completed. Please bring the card to the interview because you will be required to hand it over to the doctor. Now, the short-term students registered with the university, that means for three months or less, are classed as temporary residents and qualify for limited treatment only. In case of accident, you may obtain help from a hospital, but they are likely to charge you for this. That's why taking out private medical insurance is strongly recommended. Wysłuchaj tekstu do tego zadania jeszcze raz. Good morning and welcome to all the international students at our university. My name's Rebecca Gowers and I'm from the University Health Service. I'm here to tell you about medical care at our university. Firstly, all students registered on a full-time course of six months or more are eligible for care under the National Health Service which includes free consultation with a general practitioner and free hospital treatment. Medical insurance is therefore not required. 
Please note that there's a standard charge of £6 for any prescribed item of medication and that charges are made for dental care. Secondly, remember that you should register with a doctor as soon as you can, if possible before the end of this week. Also, you're strongly recommended to register with a local dental practice. You're not obliged to register with the University Health Service. You may choose another practice if you wish. However, every student must attend a short interview with one of the staff of the University Health Service. A full timetable informing you about the exact time of your interview was sent to each of you in the pre-arrival pack. Remember that medical interviews are a condition of admission to the university. Also bear in mind that the pre-arrival pack contains a medical record card which you should have completed. Please bring the card to the interview because you will be required to hand it over to the doctor. Now, the short-term students registered with the university, that means for three months or less, are classed as temporary residents and qualify for limited treatment only. In case of accident, you may obtain help from a hospital, but they are likely to charge you for this. That's why taking out private medical insurance is strongly recommended. Przenieś rozwiązania na kartę odpowiedzi. Zadanie piąte. Przeczytaj uważnie polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. We asked a number of visitors for their opinion about New York. Let's hear what they have to say. Speaker 1 Visiting the city made me feel totally overwhelmed. There was just too much of everything. To see it all, you'd have to stretch your time there. But the thing I enjoyed most was the people. Coming from Texas, I was made to believe that New Yorkers were rude, know-it-all and selfish. I found this to be exactly the opposite. New Yorkers are not rude, just brusque. Whatever you need to know, they're happy to tell you. Knowledgeable and friendly tour guides will make you feel like you're a native New Yorker. Speaker 2 I remember walking home from a club at about 3am and there were people everywhere. Traffic was flowing as normal, neon lights were still on. Almost every club had music blasting out of it. All the cafes were open and filled with young people. Jazz players on the streets, vendors making food in their carts, and surprisingly, a lot of stores open. And I must say all the stories about the crime rate are exaggerated. I didn't feel scared or uneasy at any time during my stay here. Speaker 3 As one of the rare persons on this planet born and raised in Manhattan, I can truly say that New York is now just like most of our nation. A multitude of ethnic groups drowning in a sea of mediocrity, where fast food institutions have infected the quality of life of what was once a genuinely exciting city, where not just real cafes but avant-garde theatre had its place, a city that attempted to live up to its name as a world capital. However, today New York is barely distinguishable from the cheap glamour of Las Vegas or the banality of LA. Speaker 4 We had the most wonderful experience in New York. Our hotel was modest but very convenient. We spent a week there in summer and we were on the go for 16 hours a day. So much to see and do and we did not want to miss a thing. 
But I don't recommend taking children there because they will be scared or tired or bored. They won't remember it and will just be irritated if you take them. Speaker 5 One thing I didn't like was the smoggy air and the queues at the Empire State Building. I got there at 3pm and didn't leave till 10pm. The elevators were crowded and I spent over four hours waiting to get in. The view was lovely in the dark sky, but the pictures didn't come out. So on the whole, it wasn't really worth such an effort. Wysłuchaj tekstu do tego zadania jeszcze raz. We asked a number of visitors for their opinion about New York. Let's hear what they have to say. Speaker 1. Visiting the city made me feel totally overwhelmed. There was just too much of everything. To see it all, you'd have to stretch your time there. But the thing I enjoyed most was the people. Coming from Texas, I was made to believe that New Yorkers were rude, know-it-all and selfish. I found this to be exactly the opposite. New Yorkers are not rude, just brusque. Whatever you need to know, they're happy to tell you. Knowledgeable and friendly tour guides will make you feel like you're a native New Yorker. Speaker 2 I remember walking home from a club at about 3am and there were people everywhere. Traffic was flowing as normal, neon lights were still on. Almost every club had music blasting out of it. All the cafes were open and filled with young people. Jazz players on the streets, vendors making food in their carts, and surprisingly, a lot of stores open. And I must say, all the stories about the crime rate are exaggerated. I didn't feel scared or uneasy at any time during my stay here. Speaker 3 As one of the rare persons on this planet born and raised in Manhattan, I can truly say that New York is now just like most of our nation, a multitude of ethnic groups drowning in a sea of mediocrity, where fast food institutions have infected the quality of life of what was once a genuinely exciting city, where not just real cafes but avant-garde theatre had its place, a city that attempted to live up to its name as a world capital. However, today, New York is barely distinguishable from the cheap glamour of Las Vegas or the banality of L.A. Speaker 4 We had the most wonderful experience in New York. Our hotel was modest but very convenient. We spent a week there in summer and we were on the go for 16 hours a day. So much to see and do and we did not want to miss a thing. But I don't recommend taking children there because they will be scared or tired or bored. They won't remember it and will just be irritated if you take them. Speaker 5 One thing I didn't like was the smoggy air and the queues at the Empire State Building. I got there at 3pm and didn't leave till 10pm. The elevators were crowded and I spent over four hours waiting to get in. The view was lovely in the dark sky, but the pictures didn't come out. So on the whole, it wasn't really worth such an effort. Przenieś rozwiązania na kartę odpowiedzi. Zadanie szóste. Przeczytaj uważnie polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania.
Taking on the portrayal of a real person is a tough job for any actor. Our magazine, Film Focus, caught up with Helen Mirren, who faces a challenge in The Queen, playing Her Majesty in the week following the death of Diana, Princess of Wales. Did you ever consider what the Queen herself might make of the film? I considered it before we started work, in the sense that I felt an honest effort was essential. All you can do in this situation is just try and be as honest as you can. Once the film was done, everybody asked the same question. What do you think the Queen will make of it? While making the film, I realised everyone would ask about it, and believe me, I kept worrying about it. But I have no idea, how can I say? Robert Lacey, the wonderful writer about the royal family and a film reviewer, said, Well, I think the Queen will say, Well, it could have been worse. Could I have a gin and tonic, please? How did you prepare to play someone like the Queen? We watched numerous tapes about the Queen, read her biographies, looked at the painted portraits. I was also working very hard with our voice coach, Penny Dyer, and got used to the voice, so it became familiar and I didn't feel like Helen Mirren doing a funny voice. Some things we did were inspiring and involving, but others totally time-consuming and uninteresting. The most valuable research for me was looking at the Queen as a young girl and reading a rather irritatingly sugar-sweet book that Marion Crawford wrote, The Little Princesses. Which scene do you remember as the most nerve-wracking? Was it the deer scene? That was the scene I didn't expect. Every single person, I'm sure, sees a different meaning to that scene. It had a personal meaning for me. We shot it out in the wilds of Scotland with a fake animal, a terrible model of a deer that looked absolutely ridiculous, which I had to be moved by. But it was a very beautiful part of Scotland, so it was quite easy to feel the intensity of the environment. What's the best and worst thing about playing real people? Some people claim that the role of a contemporary person guarantees an Oscar, but I don't think so. I haven't played living people in the past. I've stayed away from it because I think you're in a no-win position. You'll never be half as good as the real person, no matter how talented you are. All you can do, really, is fail. In fact, this is the first time I've ever played a living person. You can't imagine how intimidating and scary it is. You know you're going to be under scrutiny. People will ask you what you think about the monarchy, about Diana. And now, after some of the reviews, I wonder if it's going to be to anyone's liking so you'd better keep away from it. Did you fix on something that gave you a clue as to how to play the Queen? For me, it was a tiny 20-second bit of film about the Queen when she was 13 years old, getting out of the car and putting her hand out to shake hands with someone. The way she gets out of the car and the way she puts her hand out to me absolutely encapsulated the real character of the real person, everything about her upbringing and her own internal personality. I watched that bit of film over and over again, and when I played her, I was playing that little 13-year-old girl. Helen Mirren, thank you very much for being with us. Wysłuchaj tekstu do tego zadania jeszcze raz. Taking on the portrayal of a real person is a tough job for any actor. Our magazine, Film Focus, caught up with Helen Mirren, who faces a challenge in The Queen, playing Her Majesty in the week following the death of Diana, Princess of Wales. Did you ever consider what the Queen herself might make of the film? I considered it before we started work, in the sense that I felt an honest effort was essential. All you can do in this situation is just try and be as honest as you can. Once the film was done, everybody asked the same question. What do you think the Queen will make of it? While making the film, I realised everyone would ask about it, and believe me, I kept worrying about it. But I have no idea, how can I say? 
Robert Lacey, the wonderful writer about the royal family and a film reviewer, said, Well, I think the Queen will say, Well, it could have been worse. Could I have a gin and tonic, please? How did you prepare to play someone like the Queen? We watched numerous tapes about the Queen, read her biographies, looked at the painted portraits. I was also working very hard with our voice coach, Penny Dyer, and got used to the voice, so it became familiar and I didn't feel like Helen Mirren doing a funny voice. Some things we did were inspiring and involving, but others totally time-consuming and uninteresting. The most valuable research for me was looking at the Queen as a young girl and reading a rather irritatingly sugar-sweet book that Marion Crawford wrote, The Little Princesses. Which scene do you remember as the most nerve-wracking? Was it the deer scene? That was the scene I didn't expect. Every single person, I'm sure, sees a different meaning to that scene. It had a personal meaning for me. We shot it out in the wilds of Scotland with a fake animal. A terrible model of a deer that looked absolutely ridiculous, which I had to be moved by. But it was a very beautiful part of Scotland, so it was quite easy to feel the intensity of the environment. What's the best and worst thing about playing real people? Some people claim that the role of a contemporary person guarantees an Oscar, but I don't think so. I haven't played living people in the past. I've stayed away from it because I think you're in a no-win position. You'll never be half as good as the real person, no matter how talented you are. All you can do, really, is fail. In fact, this is the first time I've ever played a living person. You can't imagine how intimidating and scary it is. You know you're going to be under scrutiny. People will ask you what you think about the monarchy, about Diana. And now, after some of the reviews, I wonder if it's going to be to anyone's liking. So you'd better keep away from it. Did you fix on something that gave you a clue as to how to play the Queen? For me, it was a tiny 20-second bit of film about the Queen when she was 13 years old, getting out of the car and putting her hand out to shake hands with someone. The way she gets out of the car and the way she puts her hand out to me absolutely encapsulated the real character of the real person, everything about her upbringing and her own internal personality. I watched that bit of film over and over again, and when I played her, I was playing that little 13-year-old girl. Helen Mirren, thank you very much for being with us. Przenieś rozwiązania na kartę odpowiedzi. Czas przeznaczony na tę część egzaminu minął. Sprawdź, czy wszystkie rozwiązania zostały przeniesione na kartę odpowiedzi. Następnie przystąp do wykonywania pozostałych zadań. 